Now I'm going to check the, the, the camshaft and I'm checking, checking the, the camshaft lift. Most time with a, with a cam in an engine for a long time, you won't have a lot of wear on the duration. But you, you find, tend to find a lot of wear on the lift itself. And you have many different ways. You can go off of the manufacturer specification or if you check a section of the cam where the, the rocker arm don't touch, it normally have the original measurement and then you compare it with the section where the rocker arm touch. And you will see the difference and how much it is and if it's still intolerant to use. So I'm just going to check the lift right now. And I'm starting with one section that's not where. Now we're going across the Hamilton police station. And this is another direction to get to Technics Order. There is the People's Pharmacy on the right. Okay, now we are coming up on Victoria Street. Victoria Street and King Street. We're going to take a left onto King Street. Now we're right at the stop sign, King Street and Don Donald Street. King Street, now we turn right onto Curvin Avenue. And this is Technique's Garden. So I'm just checking and see how much millimeter I have there and then I'm going to move it in the center here in the center of the lift and then I'll compare the difference in millimeter and then I'll repeat the same process for all the, the, the cam the cam lobes but important, I'll match it up with the manufacturer specs if, you know, to see, to work out how much it actually wear. This is the camshaft sprocket here and I'm checking it to see if it's wear and if it's need to change also as, you know, we're building the engine on a budget. If it can use, we'll use it. If not, we change it. And what I can see right here, you can see all the chain cutting in here. So that alone tells us that it is worn. And then, if you look right here, between here and here, and compare it with this one here, this and this, you can see this teeth is almost gone. It's very narrow. So we know it's, it's worn and this definitely have to change. And then you can see another one right here. And then it wears so bad that it actually cut in into the, the, the sprocket itself. So definitely we have to put a new, a new um, camshaft sprocket. Remember our favorite geometric set? You still use it in the mechanic work and you would be surprised.
So what I'm going to do now is we need to give the valve spring two two tests. One is we're going to have, we're going to have to give it a pressure test, and normally we bring it to the machine shop. They have a, a pressure tool, or some shop may have a small pressure tool specific for that purpose. But we're also checking the spring if it's in good shape, if it's straight, if it's saggy, if any of the coils broken. So we're looking for a 90 degree angle here. And this is perfectly straight. Exact. So we know that spring is good we just got to give it a pressure test but normally it's straight it's in good shape this one is off off a couple degree so we have to replace that that one is straight also and we'll repeat the process with all the valve spring this one is actually way off you can see the big difference there so we're not even going to give it a pressure test we're just going to replace it that one is on Perfect. Perfect. So that's the end of the valve spring check. And as you can see, we we'll find two that is out of shape. So you know we know they're going to be weak in terms of pressure. And it's important for these spring to be in perfect condition because we don't want any floating. Meaning, if the engine revving at a high RPM, the spring's not closing back the valves fast enough. And even though it's a stock engine, it's not a racing engine where we're doing, that we'll be doing extreme RPM, we still want them in good shape. This is the rocker shaft, and I've got rocker shaft and the rocker arms. I'm going to check the shaft if it has any wear and I'm also going to check the, the, the rocker arm to make sure they are in good shape and also the valve adjuster the, 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 the rocker arm it have a small adjuster in here we got to check and make sure it's not worn also but important we can't mix these arms up, we need them go back in the correct place, in the correct direction with the shaft. So we, we, we mark them, but we're still going to keep them in order. And if you notice, this section of the rod is open, and this section is closed. So we're going to use that as our reference point. Okay, so now we can check the rod properly. So with the rocker shaft, we have a few different ways to, to check it. And remember, if you use a mechanic that work that training to work on different many different type of vehicle, is a whole different way of going about stuff. Different from a mechanic that work in a dealership that just work on one type of vehicle that mechanic tend to have all the specs in their head but when you use a mechanic that work on many different type of vehicle then you have to use different method either you have the manufacturer specs or in a case like this let's say we didn't have the, 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 the book or the computer with any specification what we'll do, we'll check 
the, move, the area where the rocker arm rotate and we'll measure it against another area which have no rotation. So we'll get the original measurement from the no rotation area. For example, where this bolt go through in the head. So we know this stop the rocker from rotate right here. Stop the shaft from rotate. But then the 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 the, the rocker arm will come right in this area where there's two oil holes for lubrication. And then we have the clip. Remember that clip when we um, disassembling the head? We have the groove for the clip right here. So we're going to check this area right here where the rocker arm rotate. And we're going to compare it with this area that have no rotation. So let's say you're working on this engine and you didn't have the specs. That's one way that you can just quickly work out what the specification is. So once you have this measurement and this measurement, then you can tell if they equal or if one is worn. And it's simple, you use a, a normal micrometer and you're going to check and see how much millimeter is this. And then you bring it over and you're going to go you're going to go right where the, the, the rocker rotate. Then you're going to check it just the same. You don't make it too tight. You don't make it too tight or too loose. So we have this area here which wouldn't have any rotation. So we are gonna tighten it. Adjust the micrometer where it's waxy. And as I said before, it's a term we use in the mechanic environment where, where you make something, you make an adjustment not tight and not loose. So I can feel just a slight resistance when I'm going across in that area. So right away, if I put it over here and it just drop over, without even looking at the numbers, I know it worn. So I can tell right there, we still have that same exact waxy feeling. Now I'm just checking the rocker arm. And there's two areas that, not, that is of most important. You want to make sure it's not worn. It's this bushing inside the rocker arm. And then this area. That, that actually touch the cam lobe. So you would generally, if it's bad, you're going to see some impression in there. Or you just put your hand across and you can't feel it. And there's different way for checking this same way. You know, you can mic it also and feel and check what, what is the, the distance and compare it with a new one or you get the specification which lucky enough we have the book with the specification and same with with, with the with the with the with the this copper bushing inside we're going to check and see what the bushing is and then we'll we'll compare it not compare it we'll, we'll mic it and check it against the specification in the book. So we're making it waxy just the same. This is Mr. Otherbridge. He's the machinist going to skim this cylinder head. He's top class. Great, great machinist. He's out of this world. There's nothing he can't do when it comes to machinists. This is a Bermudian machinist. Trust me, he is right there with any machinist in the world. He's going to do our BMW ad, and there it is. Hello. And this is his machine shop. Yeah. This, this is Mr. Otherbridge, and here is the BMW N10 cylinder head. He bring back, and look at it. Beautiful. He's number one. The greatest machine is ever.
<laughs> the cylinder head has returned from the machine shop and we have confidence in the machines but we still have to check it and verify it for ourselves and with this stage of the work it, you can't double check too much consistent double check over and over because you don't want to rebuild the engine or reassemble the engine and then some simple things that you overlook cause a problem for the job so now we're going to just check the head again and remember before we did have 7 tall, 4 tall or 5 tall and 3 tall in some area at the head so now it's from the machine shop it should be perfect that means zero mm -hmm. so let's give it a try so I'm just looking for so here is a I'm actually going with the number two millimeter first and see can't go nothing so perfect in the middle I remember before right in the middle here we was getting like I think it was 5 tau or 3 tau right here so now we can't even get a 2 underneath it so now we know all the parts that we need and we know everything that will be used back what will be repaired so now we're going to move to the next phase and get all the new parts after that we will start to assemble the engine block the bottom off putting in the crank pistons and so on and after we we'll get to the cylinder head and start reassembling the cylinder head while we're reassembling we're still going to do some double checks and we discuss that as we go further if you like this video don't forget to subscribe to our channel and recommend it to a friend and if you're in the neighborhood feel free to stop by and have a conversation or if you just want to send us your question or comment we will show a reply in our next video Thanks again for watching.